This is the reading for this day in Baptist history for May the 20th, and it's called Light in a Dark Continent. Our reading is from Matthew chapter 5, verses 14 through 16. Ye are the light of the world, a city that is set on a hill cannot be hid. Neither do men light a candle and put it under a bushel, but on a candlestick, and it giveth light unto all that are in the house. Let your light so shine before men that they may see your good works and glorify your Father which is in heaven. In several of our daily entries, we have considered the dangers and distress of missionary work in West Africa. Baptists, as well as other Christians, have had tremendous trials as disease and death have stalked the missionaries. Tribal warfare has been devastating on many other occasions. The work in Liberia that had been pioneered by the free slaves Lot Carey and Colin Teague had at one time seemed so promising, but eventually it was totally abandoned because of insurmountable problems. The Southern Baptists determined to enter Nigeria, which was under British rule. The pioneer missionary Thomas Jefferson Bowen landed at Badgeri on August 5, 1850, and then proceeded to Yoruba land in western Nigeria. The work began slowly. In time, a group of eight men and five women were serving on that field, but soon six of these were dead. When a fratern fratricidal Civil War in 1860-61 gripped the area, fierce anti-Christian sentiment caused an uprising that destroyed much of the mission property. It became necessary to withdraw the remaining missionaries from the field. At that time, the Southern Baptists were almost totally without a missionary presence in Africa, a situation that existed until W. J. David and W. W. Colley reestablished the mission. William Joshua David was appointed to Africa in 1874 and reached Nigeria the following year. Sent out by the Collard Baptist Convention of West Virginia, of Virginia, W. W. Colley worked to, cl to close out the work in Liberia and then to join W. J. David in reopening the mission in Nigeria. Amazingly, M. L. Stone, a national convert who had survived the tribal wars, had been preaching the gospel in Lagos to Nigerian converts who had also come through the battles. W. J. David conscripted Mr. Stone's assistance, and soon an indigenous church was established. As David visited other areas, even though occasional animosity was experienced, he discovered other converts in Abuka and Ogbo Mosho. As so many before and after him, W. J. David suffered frequent bouts of sickness and was forced to return to the United States for treatment and rest. Yet he refused to surrender his work. He eventually returned to the field, serving until 1889. Upon his return to Richmond, Virginia on October 15, 1878, the board made arrangements with the Collard Baptist Convention of Virginia for Solomon Cosby, and I quote, to locate temporarily in Lagos and use our chapel there, end of quote. And then it went on, Stone had already gone to Ogo Mo Show, and I quote, our missionary Reverend W. W. Colley uh, will go to Abakota and occupy Brother David's station. Thus, each of our three stations will have a missionary, and the work will go on much as before, but apart from Brother David." End of quote. Until that time, W. J. David had served as a single, lonely missionary in one of the most difficult fields in the world. However, while on furlough, the youthful missionary met a young lady who was willing to serve in that desolate part of Africa with him. On December 18, 1879, soon after his marriage to Miss Nanny Bland, the young couple sailed from New York on the Candanus. David wrote to Dr. H. A. Tupper, and I quote, Our desire is to glorify Christ, whether in life or death, end of quote. Perhaps W. J. David envisioned the continued privations, perhaps he did not, but his next term of service in Africa claimed the lives of a little daughter and small son. 
When Annie David became deathly ill, a British doctor prescribed a trip to Madeira as the only hope for her life. But the effort, effort was in vain, and on May 20th, 1885, she died aboard ship as it lay at anchor off Cape Coast Castle. Nanny David's last words to her husband were, and I quote, never give up Africa, end of quote. During his next furlough, Mr. David married a widow and returned to Nigeria in 1886. W.J. David erected the First Baptist Church in Lagos, Nigeria in 1887. But three years later, Mr. David's health forced him to leave Africa for the last time. He returned to the States and after regaining his health, he entered into a successful pastoral ministry in the states of Mississippi, Arkansas, and Texas. The man of God died in Belleville, Texas on June 25, 1919. In the First Baptist Church of Lagos, Nigeria, a memorial tablet serves as a reminder of the missionary who has been referred to as, and I quote, an intrepid traveler, a powerful preacher, and an able builder, end of quote. It was dedicated by his missionary daughter, Nanny B. David, in 1921. To God be the glory.